Hello and welcome to Finance Conversations. This is the 33rd episode of the Merging Life and Money Show and I am super excited to be here. For those of you who do not know me, I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I help professional women bridging the gap between life and money by acquiring and applying the relevant financial skills and knowledge they need to take control of their money, manage their finances, and understand that they can live their best life with the money they have. Thank you for joining in today. If you are watching the replay, make sure to type hashtag replay in the chat and leave me some comments and questions. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I come to you live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to share valuable information about how to achieve financial wellness and live your life with means and meaning. Today, we are going to navigate in the investing essential waters and talk about passive and active investment strategies. My guest, Eric Dudley, um, an experienced holistic financial advisor, will enlighten you on some investment essentials, buy and hold, as well as actively manage investing. So Eric is an independent financial advisor specializing in retirement planning, investing solution, and life insurance. Eric is not a stranger to this platform. He is a founder and president of Daddy Financial Group. And one of the Daddy Financial Group's main goal is to, is to help their clients build their best tomorrow while protecting them today. Welcome, Eric, to the Merging Life and Money Show. And welcome, followers and listeners. Thank you for joining in today. So grab a pen and a notebook as you might want to take some notes to discuss further with your family uh, members, your friends and colleagues, etc. because it is about sharing values that could benefit others. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to put them in the chat. Okay, so as I mentioned a few moments ago, we are about to engage in some investment talks, particularly about two essential investment strategies, uh, active and passive. Eric will focus on and help you understand what they are, how they work, and whether or not they can be used in your retirement portfolio in your kids' college saving fund, or in any other types of investment portfolio you may be looking at having. Eric, let's start with buy and hold, which is what uh, the industry calls passive investment. So tell me, what is a buy and hold strategy in investing? Well, um... Buy and hold is what most people are investing in. Uh, anybody who's had a, a 401k, uh, whenever they first sign up for a 401k, they'll ask, well, what kind of uh, investing uh, do you want to do? Do you want to do a large cap, mid cap, uh, small cap? Uh, um, do you want to do international? Do you want to do bonds or equity? Um, or do you want to do some type of blended uh, investment? You'll hear all of those things when I don't want to get into all of the definitions for those things. But when you get into them in, in your 401k, once you're set, you will be in that for the long haul. OK, they're not going to every day or every week, you know, look at it and decide, oh, well, maybe we should change things according to, you know, the news or, or according to some charts that show different trends that have come, on, uh, come up. No, no, they're going to keep you in that. And they're going to say, this is for the long haul. This is going to be, we're thinking that in 10, 20, 30 years, 
this is going to be uh, something that's going to bring a good investment return. So that's what buy and hold is. It's, it's a lot of people call it strategic investing. And so you're saying that in the long run, you will come out ahead by staying put, even oh, though you yeah, might be riding a little bit of a roller coaster because it will go down some, but then you're thinking it'll come back up and go back higher. Okay. So in short, um, a buy and hold strategy entails first buying stocks or the type of securities and not selling them for long periods of time, sometimes decades, correct? That's right. Okay. So is there a specific type of uh, stocks or securities that an investor who chooses to adopt a passive investment strategy should purchase? Well, you know, it, it really doesn't, um, I can't really say because it's all dependent upon the person. Uh, each person's different. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody is at a different age, for instance. So you have a different, what they call time horizon. Mm -hmm. So a person who's 55 will invest much, very different than a person who's 25. Uh, a person who's 25 might be much more aggressive because they have more time to recover if the market or, or your investments go down. A person who's 55 doesn't have that time to recover. So a person who's 55 would probably want to stay more conservative and, uh, and smooth out the lines, as they say, uh, of, on, the, on the trading charts. Whereas the person who's 25, well, they like roller coasters when they're young. So <laughs> let, let, let them go ahead and do that. Okay. Okay, then. So what should um, one expect when looking at the cost associated with such a strategy? Well, um, it, it really depends upon where you go. I mean, there's lots of, uh, of, of uh, investment um, places like Vanguard, for instance, that is very low cost. Uh, you can get into a Vanguard fund for almost nothing. Um, of course, you're not going to get a lot of investment advice in a lot of cases. Uh, if you go to other places where you will get more advice, the more advice you get, the more money it'll cost. Now, then you have to say to yourself, what is the overall return that you're going to have? Because that's really what it comes down to. You don't want to say, well, I saved money on this and therefore, you know, I'm really happy with what I got. What really matters is how much more money did you make in the, in, in, you know, at the, at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. um, so, so cost, you know, your fees may be higher in some, in some cases, but if it, be, it produced a better return, you might be better off because of it. Okay, so um, looking at this um, passive investment, uh, what I'm hearing and understanding, and I stand corrected, is um, you will, one, as I said, buy, buy stocks or whatever it is, hold it for a long, a long time. Um, and the cost associated uh, with such a strategy would be based on the, the investment um, vehicle or firm that you would have um, um, chosen uh, to purchase your investment from, correct? Yeah, that's right. And, and you don't even have to go to a firm in th these days. I mean, you could go on Robinhood, do it yourself. And again, it would be extremely you know, inexpensive. But then again, if you're the one doing the investing, you know, how much experience does each individual person have? Mm -hmm. I think that that's the, you know, you really have to wonder, are you going to get the better returns? Um, there's been study after study that shows um, the average return, for instance, in the S&P 500 uh, from 2000 until 2020 mm -hmm. was about 7%. Well, the average investor made 2%. And ah. the reason why is because, ah. <laughs> because they kept on taking money out and changing strategies and moving it around and thinking that they knew what they were doing. In fact, what they were doing was hurting their own investments. If they would have just stayed in a buy and hold, they would have done better. Right. And that, that's key to note because um, you get to 
uh, read about investment and you get to listen to things about investment and suddenly um, you believe that you become an expert and that you want to do your own thing. So as I said, always uh, educate yourself, but seek advice because this is, this is a very specialized field and um, um, it's good to know what each investment vehicle does and what kind of fee a strategy is likely to draw. However, you would want to leave it to the, to the specialist and to, to, to guide you accordingly. Okay, so um, let's look at the other strategy, um, the actively manage um, investing. So tell me, um, what is active management? Well, active management is exactly the opposite. Um, in this case, you are going to be not really purchasing any, any um, stocks or funds or anything. What happens is you get with a money manager, a investment money manager who has experience in working the um, investments in the markets. Um, and they give you uh, what is called a risk profile. And they put you according to whether or not you're, you, you're more conservative or you're moderately conservative, or if you're moderately aggressive, or if you're very aggressive, um, according to your risk profiles, then they will take your money and invest it into uh, a lot of times their indexed funds. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then they will put you in those funds as aggressively as what your profile deems. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the nice thing about actively managed uh, um, portfolios is that the stock market could go up and you can make money. Mm -hmm. uh, the stock market could go down and you can make money. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why is because the, the, ma the money managers uh, have the ability to pull your money out of, of the um, – of the stock market that's you know in the buy position and then wind up selling or shorting the market and taking an inverse position so that you will make money when the stock market goes down so these inverse positions give you an ability to make money going down and then whenever the market hits rock bottom the money manager sees oh yeah it looks like we're going to go back up again you put you get back into the buy position you can make money going up and so money managers uh and again these are you know, highly trained, you know, professionals who have experience working with the markets. Um, and, you know, of course, you would need to do your homework on which ones to use. But uh, but they have the ability to even in recessions or uh, volatile times, um, they can make uh, um, an investment portfolio do especially better, especially in volatile times. All right. Um, thank you for that. So what I'm hearing is that active management is for the specialist. Okay. So don't try to go and time the market. Don't do anything like that. No. Um, leave it to the expert, right? Yes. So in investment, uh, active management is the opposite, as you said, of um, um, passive um, management or buy and hold um that you just talked about so basically um active investment are funds that are run by investment managers who try to outperform an index over time um such as the sp500 i would say or even the russell 2000 i mean it's many of them there can you quickly explain what an index is oh yeah um the s like for instance, the S and P 500 is con considered the benchmark for our um, for our markets in the United States, and and it is the uh, top 500 companies uh, in the United States all together. So what they do is they take an average of how the top 500 companies did each day mm -hmm. to see whether or not it went up. And so you might have 10 companies that did great and. 40 companies did horrible. Everybody else stayed the same. All they do is they just average it all together. And so that way you get a 
um, that's the that's the benchmark. That's going to be like well, overall the markets went up 0.2 percent or something mm -hmm. like that. And that way, if you're using an index fund, your investment would go up 0.2 percent that day. Okay. okay. Um, if it went down 0.4 percent, your investments would go down 0.4 percent if you were in a buy position. And okay. so. Uh, the same thing with the Russell 2000. The two, Russell 2000 is for small cap or small companies. Uh, it's 2000 companies this time, and it, it's done the same way. The Dow Jones is the top 30 companies in the United States, um, and they're industrial, um, and, and it's, it's the same way. The NASDAQ is, is all of the tech companies, mm -hmm. and so uh, they, it's all the same as far as it's, it's just an average for each one of the companies. Okay. Well, that's um, good to know. And one day um, we'll probably do a show just explaining what all those indices are and how they, they work and, and what, what do they track. Mm -hmm. So this is a fascinating <laughs> um, investment strategy, the whole um, uh, actively managed portfolio. Uh, how does it work as it relates to retail? Because there are several schools of thoughts when it comes to um, active um, managing ma managed fund uh, as opposed to passive managed fund uh, when you look at the, their performance. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it really just depends upon who you're with. Again, uh, if you're in a firm, uh, if you're working with a brokerage that uh, is specializing in passively um, uh, managed for portfolios and they'll put you in uh, some really good funds, that might be the best to use with them. Uh, then there are other other firms uh, uh, that will have more of an actively, you know, that that's that's their thing is to have actively managed portfolios and they might have some really good products. So. Um, it really depends upon where you're at and who you're working with, because you definitely, you know, be careful with actively managed uh, portfolios, because, of course, you know, you have to get with the, the better money managers to make sure that you're going to get the better returns and the more protection for your money. Good. Um, lots. I mean, we are not we are just touching the surface here. And um, both Eric and I feel that there is a need out here, particularly for for the for the women who who are told that investment is not something for them, we just want to shift that paradigm by taking the time to explain a few things. So we're just taking a, a very uh, broad look of those two uh, basic investment um, strategies, um, which are passive and active, and you just we are just addressing the active um, uh, strategy. So we talk about the passive one a few moments ago. So is there a difference when, it, um, when talking cost, when comparing the two strategies? And I know there is this thing called expense ratio. Uh, so how, how can you explain that to the listeners? Sure, sure. Um, well, overall, I mean, uh, the passively, uh, uh, passive investments are much uh, more affordable as far as fees go. Um, the the fees are going to be usually less than one percent of the portfolio's value uh, on an annual basis, and um, and and of course you can you can do that for the whole whole time that you're investing. So it's it's not very expensive. Um, and actively managed uh, portfolios because there's so much w more work to do. The the you know with passively um, uh, passive investing. You may only change the investments, um, you know, once every two or three years, five years, ten years. Who knows? You may never change it. Um, with actively managed uh, uh, portfolios, they might be changed three, four hundred times in a year because they're constantly changing according to news, according to charts, according according to um, trends. And so uh, there's a lot more work to it. Uh, usually, an uh, a um, an actively managed uh, portfolio uh, is usually between two and a half percent to four percent. Um, so that sounds like a whole lot more, and it is. Um, but again, what um, what it really comes down to is, does it does it actually do better? You know, if if your net return is 
10% better, if your net return is even 5% better than your, than the passive return, it might be something that's, you know, more profitable. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but, but as far as the initial fees, the fees that you're going to pay actively uh, managed is definitely more expensive. Okay. Well, um, um, you, you are actually engaging someone to really track and follow everything that go, that goes on. So I could understand, I could explain, I could see the, you know, how, how, um, why it is that way. So, uh, thanks Eric, for explaining the two fund those two fundamental strategies. So since we are talking investment essential, I have two more questions for you. So, Tell us what leverage is when speaking about investing. Okay, that's my first one. So answer that one first, and I have another one for you. <laughs> okay, well, well, leverage is just just the way you would think about it. If you think about, you know, how can I pick up this huge rock? And so you put another rock next to it and you get a stick and you're able to push down, and all of a sudden a rock that you couldn't move before, you can because of mm -hmm. leverage. You use a lever. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. It's the same in investing. Um, if you're able to do use leverage, that means that you're able to put in a certain amount of money, but whenever it's invested, it has the strength of more money, okay? Mm -hmm. So for instance, whenever actively managed portfolios, if a money manager sees, oh, there's a very strong trend that, it's, that the market is going up. And so he's gonna not only put you in a buy position, but he'll put you in a, two times buy position. So he'll give you leverage in the, these different funds to be able to make twice the amount of return. Okay. And therefore take advantage of the strong trends or the same way, the opposite. If he feels like it's a very strong trend that there's going to be a drop in the market, he can put you in another leveraged selling position so that you can make money as the market goes down twice the amount of what the index went down. So again, this is a risky, this is very risky because obviously if he's wrong and the trend is wrong and he, it goes the opposite way, you could lose twice as much. Uh -huh. But if the trend is, is good and the money manager is smart and knows what he's doing, uh, you have an opportunity to make more money. Okay. So my second question is, when is cash a good investment? Almost never, <laughs> as, as they say, if, you, if, if they, 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 there's a saying I, I hear all the time, if you're a saver, you're a loser. <laughs> and the reason why is because, of course, the uh, your, your uh, inflation rate is killing you. So if you have $100 today and you stuff it in a mattress 10 years from now, that $100 will not be, buy you $100 worth of what you thought it would be 10 years ago. Okay. It might, it might buy $60 worth. Okay. But in this case, I will say there is a time to use invest in cash for investing again with actively managed portfolios. Even if you don't do the sell positions, for instance, whenever the market, whenever the money market money manager thinks the market's going to go down, he could just move you to cash. Right, be being right. able to go to cash means that you could, you could avoid, the downturn in the market and then get back in whenever the market goes back up. So mm -hmm. being able to go to cash is the, the one time when going to cash is good. Hence um, the difference between an actively managed portfolio and a um, hold and um, buy and hold uh, strategy. Right. So uh, what I'm hearing is that cash is almost never a good investment and uh, I totally agree inflation takes a bite at it anyway every second of the day and um, and uh, regarding um, let me see if I understand that leverage situation for particularly for the listeners so in short what you're saying is that leverage is an investment strategy of using what borrowed money to increase the potential return of an investment and well, yeah Yes. It is it is it is a way to be able to go into different funds that will give you twice the return or of course twice the setback if, if it mm -hmm. goes the wrong way. Um uh and 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 certain uh, you know firms and, and money managers are able to do this. But there are other ways to to use leverage also. You can you can do options, you can use uh you can trade futures, uh they all provide leverage as well. Okay, so uh, stay tuned for more 
uh, on this investment to low strategy called leverage. It's, it's quite interesting. And as I said, always when you hear leverage, when it comes to finance, are uh, you looking at borrowing, for example, we do it all the time, right? When we have to buy a car, a home, you know, whatever it is that we have to, to buy, that's leverage, right? So the question is, should you borrow to invest money in the markets? So we'll take a look at this um, uh, another time. And I had mentioned three points. We touched on two. I'm conscious of the time, so I'm going to uh, ask you my last little bit of question. I tried to make it one, but maybe two. <laughs> Can this type of investment strategies and tools be used in one's retirement portfolio, one's kids' college saving fund, or in any other type of investment portfolio one is likely to have? Yes, they can. And uh, all you have to do is is ask and find out if uh, if the brokerage um, uh, that you're working with or the firm that you're working with has the ability to do actively managed uh, uh, portfolios, find out. Uh, but you can definitely use um, either one of them uh, as a strategy if you're at the right place. Good. So lots to digest. Um, so I am going to wind down some and um, sum it up. So today we talked mainly about passive and active investment strategies. Uh, we looked at what they are, how they work, and um, is it worth using those strategies when investing? So I am going to leave you with these last thoughts. I'm conscious of the time. So when it comes to investing, um, educate yourself, do your homework, and seek the necessary advice. Okay. Investing allows you to make money without working. Uh, it is really the income that your money makes for you in the long run, right? So while our lives are empowered by money, it does, it does not revolve around it. And the more money we have, the more we can do, right? But how do we get more? So, and how do we explain that some people are able to grow their money and some are not. So guess what? That's, you know, those who have embraced the whole concept of, of investing are the ones that are making it. So if you are not putting your money to work, you need to find a course, read a book, listen to my show, talk to Google Assistant, you know, take up the phone if you have to. She will give you some answers, but you've got to learn because remaining ignorant is not the answer. Okay. It is a choice that hopefully you have not made because you are here. So remember the investment world is huge. Okay. And the only way to get a handle on it is to start now if you have not done so. And as always, think about your own situation, your life stages. Okay and your ability to tolerate risks before you invest your money. And I will refer you to the ninth episode of the Merging Life and Money Show. Um, it, uh, it is what I call, I will call it <laughs> an investment primer. So you can listen to it on many podca podcast platform or on my Facebook profile page or group. So I hope that uh, you have enjoyed today's show and found it to be helpful. Uh, as you know, I like to end the show with a quote. And today's quote is from a gentleman by the name of Aya Laraya. And it reads, when you invest, you are buying a day that you don't have to work. Okay, uh, Aya Laraya actually is a speaker an investment advocate who used to host a Filipino TV show. Um, before we go, I have a question here from one of the of the listeners. The question is, um, I am with a company called Fidelity. Would it be would it benefit me to move to a different one? 
Oh, well, I mean, I, I guess that depends upon if you're happy there um, or, or if you're making good returns, if you're, you know, if you feel like the people that are working with you are honest and doing, doing a good job. Uh, and if you feel like that you're also on track to meet your individual retirement goals or investing goals, then I would stay. If you don't feel like that, then there's always, it's always good to check around. You know, it's like everything else. If you only know one thing, then you'll never know what you missed. Um, you might want to look around and see what else is out there. Maybe Fidelity is the right place after you've looked around. Maybe there's something better. Okay. Thanks for the answer. Um, Eric, uh, tell the audience um, how they can contact you. And in fact, I'm going to uh, run a banner there that would um, show your, um, your information. So uh, if you want to tell them a little bit more with it quickly, we could do that. Sure, sure. My, um, my uh, um, uh, website is right there, dudleyfinancialgroup.com. And, uh, and if you go there, you'll see lots of places where you can either make a, an appointment directly with me and see my calendar, or you can just give me your contact information and I'll contact you and, and see, and we'll be able to see, you know, whenever we can get together and talk and, and, um, you know, see if I can answer any questions. So uh, go to my website is probably the best way to contact me. Great. Um, thank you, Eric, for your awesome contribution to the show today. Um, this is the beginning of many more to come when it comes to um, investment essentials. Um, in taking the time to explain the basics of, of investing, my followers and listeners are getting the knowledge and the understanding of how investment works. And that's important so that when they hire an investment advisor, they will not feel intimidated and they will be able to ask relevant questions regarding the way their portfolio is invested. Thanks, Eric, for that. Thanks, MJ. And looking forward to uh, having you on the show. Um, very soon again. So for more information about um, how to uh, achieve financial wellness from the inside out and live your best life with the money you have, join me next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. I'm saying hello to my Bermuda pips. And 10 a.m. Friday, Brisbane, Australia time. Thank you very much uh, once again for being here today on the Merging Life and Money Show. I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I will be back again next week. Until then, continue merging life and money. Bye for now. Thank you.